Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial video. In today's video we are going to be showing you how to add a one block autopilot microcontroller to your creation here in Stormworks. Now we'll go over all the components you require, uh, the actual microcontroller itself which you can download from the workshop. Uh, as long as with that we will also go through all the components and also how to connect everything together and also how to tweak it to, to your own preference at the end of the day. Uh, and then hopefully by the end of the video you should have a basic understanding of how it all works and how to add it into your own vessel uh, or car or whatever it needs to be in uh, the game itself. So with that all said, let's go ahead and let's get started. So to get started, you can see I've loaded up my boat from the Survival Series Season 2. Now the reason why I've done that is it's a relatively easy and basic ship uh, with not a lot of logic in it, so it's a little bit easier to understand and follow uh, from a tutorial point of view. Now, the actual autopilot system we're going to be using is we're not going to be making one. We're actually going to be using one from the workshop. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I found this is the best autopilot that I've used. Uh, I use it on all my creations. However, there might be another one out there. However, this is the one I like to use. So hence the reason why I'm showing you guys how to go ahead and install it into your own vehicle here in Stormworks. Now, the one I'm going to be using is, T is Tajin's autopilot system. Now, I've used his larger one on previous vessels before we had microprocessors here in Stormworks. Now that we have microprocessors, he's gone ahead and made his own one um, that is much smaller and much more configurable and much easier to use. So hence the reason this is what we're going to be showing you in this video. Now, he actually has two versions of this. The first one is just a simple GPS autopilot one. Uh, it has a couple inputs and a couple outputs. Pretty simple, pretty easy. He also then has a fully configurable GPS autopilot. This is the one we're going to be using for this tutorial itself. As you can see, it has a couple inputs again, compass, X, Y, so on and so forth, and then has outputs of steering, distance, forward throttle. Uh, this is pretty useful, obviously, for stopping, moving it forward, moving it back. He also has an ETA and a bearing, and then he also has a couple other ones like ready and composite. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing this down. This is the first component we need to actually go ahead and install our autopilot system into our vessel itself. Now you can see it's a four by three and this is fully configurable. In comparison to the last one, uh, it was before we had microprocessors, which was much bigger and also wasn't configurable. Uh, you would actually have to go ahead and change all the logic yourself. So now the next things we're going to need is actually going to be our dials and controls from the bridge itself. Now you can see here, I have a whole bunch of things already in here. So we're just going to be making use of the wall next to us to build uh, all the things that we need for this. Now the first thing is what you want is going to be a keypad. Now the keypad is going to be where you're going to be entering in your coordinates of where you want to go. So we're going to be needing a keypad. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is obviously also have some kind of switch to go ahead and switch it between this system, uh, the actual autopilot system, and then a manual system where we can control ourselves. Very important to add that in there also. Then we're going to probably need a couple more dials and things just to give our uh, obviously all the information that the system is giving back to us. Now, as I said earlier, it's going to give us back the bearing. It's also going to give us back the rudder rotation. It gives us back, uh, let's see what else. I think it gives us back distance also. So we can go do that. If we want to, we could even use a digital display. It gives us a little bigger of a display there. So we can use that. Fantastic. There's a couple other things that we'll get into just now, but these are the basic things that you'll be needing. Uh, obviously, as I said, there's a couple other things we'll add in later on, but that's only if you want to, you don't have to be using those systems. Uh, so once we have that in, uh, as I said, we have the bearing, uh, we can change those numbers if we want. I'm just gonna go ahead and name it bearing right this minute. The next thing we're also going to be doing is going to be our uh, distance, which is here. And then the last one is the rudder rotation which is also called steering. So once we have that done, this is going to be obviously I said on, off, and then X, Y, input, fantastic. Once we have that done, we can actually start going ahead and putting a couple of blocks of logic down. Now the couple of blocks of logic is going to be just a simple way of telling us whether the system is going to be on and off. Now we're going to be using the switch box. That's all we need, nothing else, pretty simple. Now to get all this connected up, once again, this is a very simple system to use. On off, going to go to our switch box. X and Y, you have an A and a B output. You can go find here, you have a Y position, X position, X target and Y target. X target is what you want to connect up your keypad to. So we're going to connect it to the A 
and we're going to take the output B and connect that to the Y target. This is where you want to be. Now, the next two components that you're going to be requiring to set up even further is going to be a GPS sensor. This is going to tell us where we are in the world and we're also going to need a compass sensor. This is going to be telling us which direction we are. Now, that leads me on to the next thing. You have the Y position and X position. Go over to here, you have X coordinates, connect that there, and you have the Y coordinates, connect that there. Pretty simple so far. Compass input, connect to the compass. Easy enough. Then you have a whole bunch of outputs. First one is ready, turns on when desired distance to the target. So this is a way to obviously turn on if you're within a certain desired distance of the target itself. Pretty simple. You could connect that to your engine if you want, so you can actually kill your engines when you um, when you are in the desired uh, distance to that dis uh, target itself. You also have an ETA. This is something we can add on. Forward throttle. Once again, this will go ahead and control your throttle itself. Steering. This is what we actually want to be using. Now I'm going to connect it to the rudder rotation, and I'm also going to be connecting it over to our switch box. You also have the distance. Great, that tells us how far away we are. You have the bearing. It tells us where we are in the world. Quite interesting. And as I said, you have your two other outputs we are not making use of in this tutorial. And then there's also the last ready, which we are not making use of in this tutorial. Now, as I said earlier, while we added that switch box, it was to be able to switch between this control and obviously normal manual controls. So we want to go ahead and find our manual controls, which is the A and D which is just over here. So you can see those connected to those two things over there. We can go ahead, just take those, connect it over to our switch box, from our switch box, connect to our rudders. Pretty simple. Last thing you want to go ahead and do is obviously connect electric to everything. I'm just gonna go ahead, simply hold down control, and then go and collect everything that we've added on in this video. Now, first thing we're going to do is spawn it in. Now, once it's spawned in, we can actually go ahead, climb on board, go ahead and check that everything is working as needed. So you can see here, nothing's really happening with any of this. Let's go to the map. I'm going to input uh, right there as our destination. You can see here it has X and Y on the right bottom hand side of the screen. We'll go over to our XR input, input that in over here just by pressing input waypoint, press collect. We want to get the engine started so the first thing i'm going to be doing is going to be actually turning on the power then we're going to be getting the actual engine started and you can see it started up at the moment all we have to do is hit our on signal here and if we give it some more throttle it will now automatically drive to our waypoints so you can see our waypoint is just over there if i was to go ahead and change the waypoint to here and swingle back here and change it on our inputs you can see now oh, we are automatically turning in that direction and we are heading to the waypoint itself and then as i said you have your distance to target you have your bearing and then you have your rudder rotation now i'm just going to quickly return this back to base and this is where it gets interesting in configuring the actual microprocessor itself now, all the systems work, you guys saw that, everything turned, it all worked very nicely. You can actually click on the microprocessor itself, and you can see here you have a steering multiplier, you have minimum throttle for steering, target distance threshold, acceleration time, deacceleration time, and a throttle limit itself. So, steering multiplier, how fast you want it to react to where it needs to be, minimum throttle for steering, so what is the throttle that you need on the engine itself in order for it to be steering left and right? Target distance threshold. This is how far away you want to be from the target to send a signal to that little on off thing that we showed you earlier that I didn't connect. So you could set this to whatever you want. So say, for example, you set it to 50, that would then send an on signal onto that little output that we showed you earlier. And you could connect that to the engine, for example, and it turn the engine off. Acceleration time and deacceleration time. Remember I showed you guys on here there was something called forward throttle. 
This is to control the throttle for the engine, so you could actually directly connect that to the engine itself just by using another switch box and so on and so forth. This means that that is going to go ahead and control the engine. Now you can see acceleration, how fast you want it to actually get to that target, and then how long you want it to actually de-accelerate for before when it reaches that. So how long, how fast or how slow it's going to get to that target point. And then you also have a throttle limit. So if you, when you have the autopilot system on and you are controlling your throttle with it, you can obviously set it to how fast you want it to go. So if you said, oh, I'm autopilot, I only want to ever be running at 30% power. Okay, set it to 0.3. Done. That's all it. So all your options are here inside the configurations of this. If you want to go and have a look at the back end of this microcontroller, you could also do that. I would then open up in the editor where you can obviously see everything. And then you can see all the logic that actually goes into it. It does take a little bit of time to set this up. And I, hence the reason why I, I'm chromatograting um, Dajun for this. He's done an excellent, excellent job of setting everything up here in a one block solution for everyone in Stormworks. So really quite nice. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much about it, guys. Uh, I'm not gonna get into any further. Uh, it, I've covered, I think, all the basics that you need to know uh, as far as setting up and putting it into your own creation. Uh, if not, uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you're having a hard time with. Otherwise, come join my Discord community server. Uh, and there's lots of people, including myself, that are on there all the time and willing to help out. So then we'll go ahead and end today's video over there, guys. Uh, as always, comment below what you'd like to see in any future videos. Why there? Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to follow any of my upcoming content. And finally, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always, and we'll see you in the next one.